Hello, Algebra 1 students, and welcome to your Semester 2 Final Exam Review. As a reminder, each year the um, numbers up here or over here might change, but I'll renumber the YouTube videos to match up, and that's just if they change the order of the review or change what's on the final, I may have to reorganize these videos, but hopefully nothing too bad. Um, okay, let's get started. Uh, each problem that I give you, I'm going to give you a lesson when we first learned how to do this problem. This comes from lesson 6.3, so exponentials, third lesson. Um, so you can look back on those lessons and get more in-depth than these videos, because these videos are fairly short. Um, and then I'll usually try and give you at least two different ways that you can figure out the answer. I won't always be able to do that, but I'll usually be able to give you two. So let's look at our first one right here. Which expression is equivalent to the square root of x cubed? Well, let's go the correct way first. What they're expecting you to remember is that if you have x, a root, and then we're going to say a and b, just like so. Um, I'm going to switch those though, because when we learned them, they were switched b and a. Um, they expect you to know that there is a relationship between that and x to some power. In particular, this guy becomes x to, this power here, a, is still a power, and it actually stays way up here. And then this b, the index of our root, becomes the bottom of our fractional exponent. And you could also write this as a over b, and this is still x, something like that. So if we use that with what we have here, square root of x cubed, okay, we should be able to see that 3 is a, and a goes on the top of the fraction. Right, so we know that our answer here has 3 up top, and that allows us to quickly eliminate c and b. That has the 3 as the denominator. Then it comes down to a versus d, and you might be tempted to pick a because you're like, oh, there's only a 3 in here. But x cubed just means x times x times x. This does not mean x times x times x. It means x times x times x, then take a square root. And so we need to remember that in a square root, there is always an invisible 2 hiding. This number, this index right here, tells you how many of the same number you're looking for that multiply back to equal the inside. And the square root always has a 2. And so that means there is an invisible 2 here. Now, that certainly shows us that our answer is d. Um, another way to determine this is you could actually use your calculator. Now, remember, your calculator can't do x, right? Anytime you see an x, don't try to plug it into your calculator. But what it can do are numbers. And so what we could try on our calculator is you could pick a number. It doesn't matter what. Some will be decimals, some will be fractions. Um, I'll just pick the number 5, because I know 5 is going to give us a gross decimal, um, but that's okay. So if I wanted, I could try the original problem first, and I could say, what is the square root of 5 cubed? And then I'm going to take just the answer for now. Our answer is, again, d over here. And I'm going to say, what is 5 to the 3 over 2 power? And I'm going to compare those. So if you have your calculators ready, I'm going to talk you through what each one of these looks like on your calculator. Um, and then we should be good. Now, since I don't have your calculator emulator, I'm just going to quickly do it on Desmos's scientific calculator. But I'll talk to you about what we're doing for our steps. So what you would be doing on your blue calculators, if you're going to go ahead and do this first one, the square root of 5 cubed, is you would type in your square root symbol first. Okay? And then on your calculators, very important, we want to do 5 cubed in parentheses. We want to do 5 to the, and on my calculator, it's this button. On yours, it would be that caret, that up arrow, right? 5 to the third power. Okay, this is the square root of 5 cubed we end up with 11.180. Make sure you get that on your calculator. Then I'm going to compare that, so I'll hit enter just so I can save my results up here. I'm going to compare that to 5 to the 3 halves power. And the way you type this in is also important. So we're going to do 5, and then you're going to have to do your power button, so you're going to have to do your um, up arrow. And now when I do this, very important, you're going to need parentheses. Okay? 
And for our parentheses, we're going to have to do 3 divided by 2. If you don't do parentheses, whoops, and I'm already not doing well here. Um, if you don't do parentheses, you're going to end up getting a wrong answer on your calculator. Okay, close your parentheses and hit enter. And you'll notice that they have the same answer. That's just telling us whatever you put in for x here, if you put it in for x here, you better get the same answer. So that's just a second way to check it if you forget this relationship. You can just pick a number and try it. Thanks for tuning in, and come back anytime for other problems.